Thanks very much. Um, so yeah, I have a rather long title. Uh, binary, ternary, Wedderburn, Etherington numbers with applications and generalizations. This is basically variations on the theme of Catalan numbers, uh, as will become clear uh, in a moment or two. So let me just give you uh, an introduction to what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, most of what I do is uh, non-associative algebra. And so when you've got non-associative operations, it's just very important to keep track of where the parentheses are. So um, I'm interested in uh, determining the number of distinct association types. Um, that's a term that goes back to Wedderburn's original paper. Uh, association types means placements of operation symbols or placements of parentheses. Uh, in a monomial of degree n. Um, and using, in this particular talk, I'm interested in using commutative, which means completely symmetric binary and ternary operations. So I'm using square brackets for the binary operation and um, ordinary parentheses for the ternary operation. Um, so, uh, it turns out another way to interpret these numbers is that we are enumerating uh, rooted abstract trees uh, in which every internal node has two or three children. The internal nodes represent the operations and the leaves represent the uh, arguments in the monomial. So, uh, in this particular problem, the maple calculations produce this initial sequence, which um, was not in the uh, online encyclopedia. Uh, so I added it, it's now uh, sequence 268172. And I did a Google search on the first two terms of that sequence, but it turned out not to produce anything particularly interesting. Uh, just some random phone numbers and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next <coughs> is to determine the uh, number of distinct multilinear monomials in the group. Yeah. So that means where, instead of having dashes representing where the arguments go, I'm putting in uh, a permutation of n symbols, and that's equivalent to trees with n labeled leaves. Um, uh, another way to think of it is as a sum over all of those association types of, well, you take n factorial permutations of the variables to go into the n slots, but because the operations are commutative, um, each association type has a group of symmetries, so you have to divide by the order of that group of symmetries. And I'll give a some more information about that later on. Uh, so this produced a much faster growing sequence because basically we've got the previous one more or less times n factorial, which, which was also not in the uh, encyclopedia, and so I added it, 268163. Uh, Googling this sequence gave me a big surprise because uh, Googling the first few terms, because I picked up a lot of nuclear physics papers on quantum chromodynamics, QCD, uh, related to Feynman diagrams involved with gluon scattering. Gluons are the particles that hold, hold quarks together in the uh, protons and the neutrons in the, in the nucleus. Uh, and the underlying structure in both cases is the set of the labeled binary ternary directed, uh, actually I shouldn't have said directed there, uh, yeah, scratch directed, rooted abstract trees indexed by the number of Okay, so let me sketch the uh, background and then go on and get to some uh, related sequences. So I need to set up some terminology about trees. Um, yeah, all graphs are going to be undirected, although there might be a natural direction uh, to put on things uh, uh, in some cases. Finite sets of vertices and edges. Uh, so what's a tree? It's a connected graph with no cycles. Uh, a leaf is a vertex of degree one. Uh, an internal vertex is a vertex of degree at least two. Uh, a rooted tree has one internal vertex designated as the root. And a planar tree has an orientation, uh, that's to say an embedding into R2, uh, which you can also think of as an enumeration of the leaves from uh, left to right. And a complete entry tree uh, is one in which Every internal vertex has exactly n children. And, well, now there are two different notions of isomorphism for rooted trees, basically depending on whether we label the leaves or not. Um, 
So we can think of them as abstractly as rooted trees. That's ignoring the orientation or not putting labels on the leaves. Or we can have what I call a concrete isomorphism um, as planar rooted trees, preserving the orientation, the embedding into the plane, or equivalently the order on the leaves from left to right. So I'm going to call these abstract and concrete isomorphism, which is perhaps non-standard terminology, but uh, uh, I find it, found it helps me avoid getting confused with what I was supposed to be talking about. Okay, so let's look at an example. Uh, those three trees are abstractly isomorphic uh, because you can move those two branches and get this one, and then you can move those two and get this one. So. Uh, if you ignore the orientation, uh, they're all equivalent. Uh, and they represent uh, these association types. So this is the first example of showing you what the real bijection is between these trees and these non-associative objects here. Uh, what does this represent? So the circle is an internal node uh, representing an operation. The bullet is a leaf representing an argument. So this means you take two arguments, combine them using the binary operation, uh, then you use that as the first argument of a ternary operation with two more arguments. Uh, this is very similar, except now the binary product is in the middle. This is very similar, except the binary product is in the third argument of the ternary operation. Uh, so this is assuming these operations have no symmetry. Uh, um, these would be three distinct uh, association types. No symmetry corresponds to uh, the ordinary Catalan numbers, as we'll see in a moment. And, and so, if you want to look at multilinear monomials here, well, each of these three distinct association types allows all four factorial permutations uh, of the arguments, because we're assuming no symmetry of the operations, and so we get 72 multilinear monomials. Uh, now, what if the <coughs> operations have symmetry? What if the binary operation is commutative and the ternary operation is also commutative in the sense that you can commute the arguments uh, and get the same result? Well, if the operations have symmetry, then we only get uh, one association type because we can always move the binary product to the leftmost position, the first position. And we can assume that the two arguments of the binary operation, the subscripts are increasing and the other two arguments of the ternary operation, their subscripts are increasing. So we only get four choose two, which is six multilinear monomials there, uh, when we're talking about symmetric operations. So there's a big drop. From non-symmetric, you have 72, to symmetric, you have only six. Okay, so the distinction between symmetric and non-symmetric operations, uh, this corresponds to the distinction between abstract and concrete free isomorphism. And the distinction between multilinear monomials and association types corresponding to uh, pre labeled and with unlabeled leaves. Okay, so quick review of binary Catalan numbers. They enumerate complete binary rooted trees with n internal vertices up to concrete isomorphism. Uh, equivalently, association types for a binary operation with no symmetry. There's the well, on formula. Notice n here is the number of internal vertices. That's the standard way to write Catalan numbers. And of course, there are many well-known interpretations. Uh, they solved Schroeder's first problem. Um, they uh, give you triangulations of polygons. Uh, they give you some uh, Young diagrams. And they give you some set partitions. Oh, that's pretty well known. Um, what's less well known is that the there's a nice generalization of the Catalan numbers to m bigger than or equal to 3. And that's just generalizing, replacing the binary trees with the ordinary Catalan numbers, replacing them by complete m area trees. So <coughs> each internal node has m children. And you can think of those as representing association types for an m area operation. So, uh, yeah, complete m area root trees with n internal vertices up to concrete isomorphism. Again, n is the number of internal vertices. And there's a very, very nice uh, natural generalization of the binomial formula for binary Catalan numbers. Uh, just replace the 2 by m, and we'll put a coefficient of m minus 1 in front of the 
n in that denominator, and you've got the formula. There's a nice proof of this in the book, uh, the Concrete Mathematics book by Graham, Clinton, and um, And, um, yeah, just a reminder again, I said it, well, I said it a few times. At this point, n is the number of internal nodes. Uh, and, well, these sequences are, a lot of them are in the online encyclopedia, uh, even up to m equals 11. Uh, starting at 12, <coughs> they're not there, so maybe, maybe I'll get around to uh, putting them there. But, implicitly, there is one sequence that contains all of these sequences, um, 62993. It's a flattened triangle composed of the Fafus, or Rainy sequence, sequences, also called generalized pattern numbers. Okay. So that's binary Catalan numbers, binary Catalan numbers. What if you have two operations, binary and ternary? Uh, and at this point, uh, we're going to shift. The number n is now the number of leaf nodes, not the number of internal nodes. Because when you have two operations of different arities, uh, the bidection uh, doesn't work anymore um, between the number of leaf nodes and the number of internal nodes. And so, Binary ternary Catalan numbers are enumerating isomorphism classes of concrete rooted trees in which internal nodes have two or three children. Equivalently, association types for monomials involving binary and ternary operations with no symmetry. And this sequence turned out to be in the online encyclopedia, 1002. Um, the number of sections of a convex n plus 2 gone into triangles or quadrilaterals by non intersecting diagonals. Sort of not too surprising that that's the geometric description of the same thing. And another way to describe this, and very nice way to describe this, is it's just the series reversion of this simple polynomial where you take x minus x squared, representing the binary operation, minus x cubed, representing the ternary operation. Well, what if we extend this and go binary, ternary, quaternary? Uh, then we're talking about trees in which internal nodes have two or three or four children. And equivalently, association types for binary, ternary, quaternary operations. Um, again, well, this is not too surprising. It's in the uh, encyclopedia, and that's the, the generating function is the series of version of that polynomial. And of course, we can go all the way up to um, binary up to m -ary operations and get binary up to m -ary Catalan numbers. And uh, they're the coefficients of that uh, series reversion. And for m bigger than or equal to 7, these are not in the uh, encyclopedia, so I should probably put them there. However, the limit as m tends to infinity here, where you allow operations of all arities, or uh, internal nodes of any degrees, is the solution to Schroeder's problem too. And this has a very, very pretty uh, generating function, this quadratic irrational generating function. Um, the, the irrationality gets, uh, depends on m uh, for finite m, but in the limit, it collapses to something quadratic, which is actually we're very nice. Okay, now, up until this point, everything has been uh, concrete isomorphism uh, and operations with no symmetry. So now we're going to go to uh, abstract isomorphism or operations with symmetry. So the Wedderburn Etherington numbers enumerate complete binary rooted abstract trees with n leaves. So it sounds the same as Catalan, but now we're talking about abstract isomorphism, not concrete isomorphism. And <coughs> equivalently, we're talking about a binary operation which is commutative, but not associative. Those are the numbers. Um, we can also think of this uh, as the number of distinct n powers of an argument x for a commutative <coughs> non-associative operation. So um, for first and second and third powers, there's only one possibility. But as soon as we go into 
higher powers, we get more and more possibilities, depending on the partitions of the degree. Uh, 4 is 3 plus 1 or 2 plus 2, so we can either take a cube times x or a square times a square, and we get different things. And if you just write down all those possibilities, you get the uh, Wedderburn Eddington numbers. Uh, this is a recursion formula on the first line. Um, this is basically just adding up the way I did here, factoring an nth power into two smaller powers. And there's a bit of a wrinkle when n is an even number. You have to add this uh, extra term. And that gives a functional equation for the generating function, uh, which looks like that. And now, unfortunately, it seems that there's unlikely to be a nice solution for these numbers, because if you look at this functional equation, um, John's brother has proved that this generating function is hypertranscendental function, so it probably doesn't have nice coefficients in the power series. Okay, well, again, we can generalize this to an m area operation. Uh, and uh, I believe there's a table over the two. This should be leaf, leaf nodes here. So, commutative or symmetric operation just means invariant under all permutations. Um, these sequences are uh, from n equals 3 to 7, they're in the encyclopedia. Uh, this one had an interesting description. Some chemistry that I know nothing about. Um, and uh, for m equals 4, you get that. For m equals 5, you get these numbers. And uh, the OEIS also pointed out that the generating function satisfies this interesting equation uh, involving a cycle index over the symmetric group. And that is also true for m equals 6 and for m equals 7. And, well, when you see a few of those, it's, well, the first question is, just as in the limit of the Emery Catalan numbers had a nice answer, is there some nice answer to the limit of these Emery Wedderburn Edmonton numbers? And then conjecture that the, the generating function satisfies this uh, simple formula in terms of the cycle index for the symmetric. Okay. Now we're getting to the main point of the talk. Binary ternary, whatever another number. So we want to enumerate isomorphism classes of abstract rooted trees in which every internal mode of two or three children as a function of the number m of the leaves. Equivalently, enumerate association types involving commutative, binary, and ternary operations. So that was actually the question that I originally asked myself. Uh, coming from non-associative algebra, enumerate those possible association types, uh, or enumerate the corresponding multilinear elements. So, what do the, how do we enumerate the association types? Well, we have to consider all partitions of n into two or three parts. Um, so, decreasing partitions. Start off with t of one equals one. Assume that all the values are known up to n, uh, less than n. Uh, and then we get a uh, summation formula, which looks intimidating, but it's actually uh, rather trivial. It's basically the wedderburn eddington binary recursion formula plus some terms uh, for the Turing operation. Uh, if the degrees of the factors are all different, if the second degree equals the third degree, the first degree equals the uh, second degree, or all three degrees are equal. So need to modify it. That, that's easy thing to program to get these numbers, and you get that sequence. <coughs> and it will be interesting to find the cubic equation for the generating function. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult, but I haven't done it yet. And this is the uh, sequence that produced nothing of interest when I Google it. Uh, on the other hand, look at the labeled trees with leaves, num leaves numbered 1 to n. Uh, and so here's an example of what I mean by the symmetries of the association type. Here's degree n equals 6. We've got a ternary operation, and each argument is a binary operation. So when you plug in x1 to x6 here, 
you can switch those two and those two and those two, and you can permute those three factors. So you divide 6 factorial by 2 cubed times 3 factorial, and you get only 15 distinct multilinear monomials for that association type, rather than um, 720. And you get these numbers, and this is the sequence that produced the Feynman diagrams. So, enumerates the Feynman diagrams, which arise in gluon scattering, uh, which is denoted gg goes to mg, at tree level, and that just means that there's no loops allowed in these Feynman diagrams. So gluon paths in the Feynman diagrams are represented by coils, and physical theory, quantum chromodynamics, requires that no vertex has degree greater than four. And so this is what gives us the nice correspondence with trees, uh, binary ternary trees. So the internal vertices in the Feynman diagrams have degree three or four, um, and the leaves are labeled by distinct gluons. And so here's an example. Um, you have to add an extra uh, node to, to indicate the uh, root of the tree here. Um, so this Feynman diagram corresponds to this non-associative monomial. Uh, I've got a vertex of degree four here, so it represents a ternary operation and its arguments are g1, and then this value, and then g2, and this value is g3 binary operation with g4. And there's a more, slightly more complicated example uh, of a uh, allowed Feynman diagram, which would correspond to this uh, non-associative multilinear Okay, well, uh, so what's, what's QCD? Uh, it's the theory of strong interactions. The interactions between quarks and gluons, which make up hadrons, such as the nuclear particles, protons, and neutrons in particular. And this is a non-abelian gauge theory uh, because the symmetry group is SU3, it's a non-nuclear group. In quantum electrodynamics, the symmetry group is just uh, the uh, non-zero scalars. And the QCD analog of electric charge is this property called color that you've probably heard of. Um, and the gluons are the force carrier of this theory, just like photons are for the um, electro quantum electrodynamics. Uh, and uh, part of the standard model, large body of experimental evidence, and I snitched all this from Wikipedia. That article actually seems to have been written by somebody who knew what they were talking about, which was nice. Um, gluons, change. <laughs> gluons, um, yes, gluons carry the color charge of the strong interaction. So that's unlike the photon, which mediates the electromagnetic interaction, but does not have an electric charge. So gluons participate in the strong interaction in addition to mediating it, making this, making QCD as a non-abelian theory much harder to analyze than QED, quantum electrodynamics. More important. And, well, uh, just about out of time. Uh, these are from the Wikipedia article for gluons, which are the Feynman diagrams illustrating how gluons were discovered. Uh, and there's a couple of nice historical articles about this in the European Physical Journal. Um, you can annihilate uh, an electron and a positron, and you uh, get a quark and an anti-quark, and a gluon sort of flies off uh, on the side there. Or you can do the same sort of thing and get a uh, meson, this epsilon meson with a bottom quark and an anti-bottom quark, which then decomposes into three gluons. These have actually been observed in these, you know, like large hadron colliders and whatnot. Well, uh, I found this nice article by Anastasia Bolovich, Yang Mills Amplitude and Twister String Theory. Um, it's very hard to compute these gluon scattering amplitudes that <coughs> physicists want to uh, work out. And the reason is that there are so many Feynman diagrams. Um, and each Feynman diagram is 
but gives a complicated contribution. The number of Feynman diagrams is exactly these numbers, uh, <coughs> binary ternary weatherman numbers. And um, yeah, and this, well, there's a famous paper by Ed Witten, um, which attempts to explain, uh, in terms of string theory, why the results you get from these complicated calculations are much simpler than you would expect. And, well, just to touch on generalizations in the last minute, we can extend this from binary, ternary, up to binary operations. You get numbers like this. Um, these sequences are not in the encyclopedia. Uh, but the limit, again, the limit is a nice sequence. You can see it's sort of converging here. Um, it's a number of, not, I didn't quite understand what this was supposed to be saying. Series reduced planted trees with n leaves, essentially series or parallel, series parallel networks with n edges. I, don't ask me what that means. Um, and so corresponding to those more complicated trees with higher degree vertices, you can theoretically construct some kind of physical theory. Uh, I was speaking to a physicist in Saskatoon. These theories would not be renormalizable, which sounds really bad. But actually, physicists don't mind this at all. They think um, almost everything is, is non-renormalizable. I mean, they're so used to canceling off these infinities using tricks. Uh, there's a whole theory about it, even a group of symmetries. Uh, this is nothing nothing to worry about as far as they're concerned. And that's from some lecture notes on uh, theoretical physics from Harvard. And that's it. Thank you.